Welcome in everybody. The MLS action is coming fast and furious as we enter the stretch run of the season. And with that being said, there's another full card of MLS action with 13 games going down on Wednesday for MLS Week 29. Now before we get into this week's picks and predictions, be sure to give the thumbs up to this video to get more MLS picks and picks from other leagues all season long. Now last weekend, we had a split. We went one and one, but technically it was a small, small winner as the winner was a plus money bet. And we were just one, one goal away, one RSL goal away from winning the second bet. But RSL do seem to be spiraling right now after the injury to Pablo Ruiz. Now let's go and jump into Wednesday's games, and I'm going to start off with Atlanta and Cincinnati, which looks like a great match. The last meeting between these teams was 2-2, two two, but that was last season. This season, Cincinnati leads the Sporter Shield race by 10 points after winning 3-0 over New York City FC on the weekend. That's the fifth time in seven games in all competitions Cincinnati has scored three goals. It's also the ninth time in 12 games they've scored two or more. But... but uh, um, we can also look to the entirety of their 2023 campaign, and we can see that FC Cincinnati has only failed to score a goal in three of 33 games across all competitions. Atlanta, they, come into, they came out of the League's Cup break with a 2-0 and 4-0 win over Seattle and Nashville, respectively. And across all competitions at home in 2023, the five strikes have scored in all 14 games at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, and they've scored multiple goals in nine of those 14 games. Amidst interest from Dutch Giants Ajax, Diego Almada scored once and added two assists on the weekend in Saturday's 4 0 route of Nashville. Four different players scored on Saturday, including new DP Saba Lopzenzi. Let's just go Saba, that's what it says on his jersey. Definitely probably got the last name wrong. Both teams play to the over this season, with Atlanta being 18 and 8 and Cincinnati 16 and 9. The top four teams in XG this season are LAFC, Vancouver, Columbus, and Seattle. Then it's each of these two teams. It's 30, at 37.7, Atlanta comes in next, and 37.1, Cincinnati just after. Both of these teams have easily outperformed those metrics with 48 and 42 goals, respectively. Atlanta has put the second most shots on target this season with 129, only behind RSL's 138. This one is probably both teams to score, or both teams to score in over 2.5 as a single bet, but surely it's probably going over 1.5 for at least two goals. That's how I'll start off this parlay. Going into the second leg, I'm going to Toronto and Philadelphia. The Union are 9-0-1 in their past 10 in all competitions, and they just went on the road and beat DC United 3-1 on the weekend. Toronto has lost 10 in a row now in all competitions and are winless in 13. They just lost to Columbus on the weekend 2-0. They've been outscored 23-3 in those 10. That's just awful. It's terrible. On Monday, Toronto announced that Canada men's national team coach John Herdman will now be their new head coach. He's never coached um, as a, a league team, only coached nationally with the men's and women's and also in New Zealand. He's had success with those teams, but even though that might be good for next season, it's not going to help much this season as he's not joining till October 1st when Toronto season will very likely be all but officially over. This has to be a Philadelphia win uh, on the road. Doesn't Shouldn't matter. Philadelphia should get the win here, but somehow maybe it's just the home team bias living close to Toronto or seeing Insigne and Bernadeschi on the field every week and thinking that Toronto can't possibly just keep losing every single week. So I'll just go very safe and go Philadelphia to score for the second leg of this parlay. And next we'll go to a Leagues Cup final rematch and it's Miami and Nashville. These teams will rematch already. They just played in the final of the Leagues Cup a couple weeks ago. Now Messi and Miami, they just defeated Nashville in penalties after a one-to-one -one draw just a couple weeks back. Like I said, now the venue will switch to drive pink in Miami. Messi has scored. He did score in all seven Leagues Cup games. He didn't score in the U.S. Open Cup semifinals, but he got back on the score sheet in his very first MLS game on the weekend on Saturday despite only playing 30 minutes, and Miami got another win against the New York Red Bulls. Messi now has 11 goals and 6 assists in his 9 games with the Herons, of which Miami has won all 9, despite 3 of those going to PKs after being tied in regulation during the League's Cup. Nashville just suffered their worst loss in franchise history, losing 4-0 to Atlanta on Saturday. In this game, Miami hasn't lost with Messi here. They probably do keep winning. This will be their first home, technically MLS home game with Messi in the lineup. They probably win. However, Nashville should be looking for revenge after losing the League's Cup final. You could also probably see both teams to score. I can see all of these options happening here. I do think Nashville should respond after that Leafs Cup loss and after a 4-0 beatdown. But that beatdown is also very concerning. They lost 4-0 and they could lose big again. So no matter the outcome, Nashville 
has seen over 1.5 goals in each of their past 10 games. And for Miami, all nine games with Messi on the team have also gone over 1.5, and they've also seen over 1.5 in 15 straight games as well. So let's just go over 1.5. So Nashville and Miami over 1.5, Philadelphia to score, and Atlanta and Cincinnati over 1.5. That comes in at minus 142 if you want to go very safe. I would also be comfortable just going both teams to score with Atlanta and Cincinnati instead of over 1.5 if you want a little bit better odds. That would bring that up to plus 125. Let's go to another parlay with three more games on Wednesday. I'm starting off with Houston and Columbus. Both teams have come out of the Leagues Cup break flying despite not having tons of success during the tournament. The crew have posted back-to-back -back shutouts of 3-0 and 2-0 over Cincinnati and Toronto, respectively. And MLS, they're 7-3-1 in their past 11, and they're 9-3-2 in all competitions in their past 14. Columbus has scored multiple goals in each of their past six games in all competitions, with new addition Diego Rossi opening his account on Saturday versus TFC. Columbus has also scored multiple goals in 12 of their past 14. They've still only failed to score a goal twice across all competitions in 2023, so that's a stretch of 31 games this year. Only one of those two where they didn't score was in MLS. So they've still only failed to score once in MLS this season. In each of their past 15 games, bets on over 1.5 or a perfect 15-0, and 0, and over 1.5 bets would be 20-1 and 1 in their past 21 in all competitions. The crew's last two wins both came at home. Now they'll travel to the balmy Texas Heat in Houston to play the Dynamo. The Dynamo are really strong at home, being 8-2-2, two, and, two, and they've outscored their opponents 24-8 to eight this season. Houston are coming off two shutout wins of their own in MLS play. They beat Portland 5-0 at home, and then RSL 3-0 on the road. Those wins were sandwiched around another win over RSL last week in the U.S. Open Cup semifinals, a 3-1 win in extra time as well. So counting all competitions, Houston is now on a 5-0-1 run. Outside of a 0-0 draw in the Leagues Cup, which they went on to win in PKs against Pachuca, as well as a 3-0 home loss to Minnesota in July, Houston has scored multiple goals in seven of their other nine recent home games, scoring 24 goals in those seven games. Now, two did come in extra time during the U.S. Open Cup. I think right now it's hard to see either team not scoring, with Houston being so hot at home and Columbus almost never failing to score a goal, though both have also had shutouts. So... I do think both teams to score as a single bet could be a good play or just over 1.5 goals in this parlay. Next up, I'll go to the Minnesota and Colorado matchup. Now, these teams usually see goals in this matchup as Minnesota won 2-1 already earlier this season, and other recent scores were 4-3, 2-1, 3-1, and 3-1. Now, bets on both teams scoring and the over are also 8-2 in the past 10, and over 2.5 just by itself has also cashed in 9 of 10 meetings. But the safer bet here might just be for a Minnesota win. Colorado has just one win in 13 games across all competitions. They had one, in one win in 13 games heading into the League's Cup. They lost both games in the tournament, and they came out of the break, losing once again 4 to nothing to LAFC last week. That means the Rapids are now 1-4-11 in their past 15 games, and they've been outscored 29-9 to in all of those competitions. On the road in MLS, they've been outscored 24-9, to Meanwhile, in all competitions, Minnesota is 7-3-3 three, and three in their past 11 and have scored multiple goals in nine of those games. Minnesota to win at home looks like a good bet on its own or just Minnesota to score a goal for this parlay. And the last leg, we'll go to the Cali Classico. It's all uh, Los Angeles. It's a matchup in Los Angeles between San Jose and the Los Angeles Galaxy. It's the third edition of the Cali Classico this season. LA won at home 2-1 in the first meeting, and the teams drew 2-2 in San Jose in the second. That makes it the sixth straight time a bet on both teams to score, and over 2.5 has cashed in this rivalry. This is also the highest scoring head-to-head -head matchup between any two teams in MLS history. San Jose, they just got smacked around in Kansas City 3-0 last weekend, and despite being outplayed in Vancouver in the game prior, they did come away with a 1-0 win. They were poor in the League's Cup, losing 1-0 and 2-0. So overall now, it's one win in four, and that one win was very poor when you look at the stats, and it's only one goal in four. But those two last losses did come on the road, and in this game, they'll be back at home, where they have just one loss in MLS this season at 7-4-1. The Quakes have scored in all but two of their home games this season. And dating back to last season, they have scored in 15 of 17 at home at well. 15 and 17 at home as well. The Galaxy have not been in not been in good form at all this season as they are in 13th place in the Western Conference. Now much of that has to do with their poor road form where they're 1, 5, and 6, and they've been outscored 22 to 9. But they had been scraping together some results right before the tournament, being 2, 4, and 0 oh, before losing 4 
to two to Vancouver right before the Leagues Cup. They had two Leagues Cup losses and then early exit, which gave them plenty of time to rest. And when they came out of that break, they started off with a 3-0 win over Chicago on the weekend. They've now scored in 10 of 12 games overall in an MLS play only. They are 4-4-1 in their past nine. So they do seem to be trending in the right direction, at least as we head into this, the late stages of the season. That also includes in those recent uh, nine games, that does include the 2-2 draw in San Jose recently back in July. History says this rivalry will always produce goals. The Galaxy need points as they need, and they need them soon as they're running out of time to try to make the playoffs. So they'll need to go for this one. A bet on its own, both teams to score, maybe both teams to score in over 2.5. I'm going both teams to score in this parlay. So it's San Jose, LA, both teams to score, Minnesota to score, and Houston, Columbus over 1.5. That comes in at plus 119 odds. So there we go. Those are my MLS Week 29 picks for Wednesday. Be sure to drop yours in the comments below. Give this video a like and good luck everybody with all of your MLS picks this week.